LiDAR is a laser ranging technology that has greatly enhanced the visualization of the Earth's surface. This is a satellite image of the area around Rex, North Carolina. We can see a multitude of farm fields in the middle of a network of roads. Vegetation grows along the winding rivers and creeks. There are also some elliptical features which are Carolina based, but they are not easy to see. LiDAR strips away the vegetation to reveal the surface of the Earth. This image from the U.S. Geological Survey shows a large number of Carolina bays on the fairly flat surface of the Atlantic coastal plain. We can also see the winding fluvial channels that were covered with vegetation in the satellite image. This is the same area around Rex, North Carolina, viewed with a topography that uses a colorized ramp that repeats for every 10 meters of elevation. The high-resolution LiDAR images are provided by Michael Davies at Cintos.org. From the transition of colors, we can tell that the surface at the top left of the image is approximately 10 meters higher than the bottom right of the image. We can also estimate the elevation of the rims relative to the center of the Carolina base. Michael Davies also provides the ovoid basin survey, which as of March 2023 has identified, measured, and mapped over 70,000 basins, many of which are Carolina based. The importance of the colorized topography can be appreciated in this side by side comparison. The color gradient makes it possible to identify subtle geological features that are easily overlooked in the gray image. The color contrast at the boundaries of the features makes it easier to locate the rims of the Carolina Bays. The Carolina Bays and the Nebraska Basins are found on unconsolidated soil close to the water table within 1,500 kilometers from the Great Lakes. The orientations of these geological structures converge by the Great Lakes. The elliptical geometry of the basins and the radial alignment is characteristic of impact ejecta. The glacier ice impact hypothesis proposes that the basins formed from secondary impacts of glacier ice chunks ejected by an extraterrestrial impact on the Laurentide ice sheet. Carolina bays are found from New York to Georgia along the Atlantic coast. There are some small Carolina bays on flat portions of Long Island that have not been modified by human urbanization. This image also shows the rough terrain of the Ronkonkoma moraine that formed from stony debris deposited by melting glaciers about 55,000 years ago. The Carolina Bays in New Jersey are almost circular and seldom exceed 200 meters in diameter. The projectiles that made the basins in New Jersey would have measured about 36 meters in diameter and each one would have had kinetic energy equivalent to about 22 kilotons of TNT. The shape of the Carolina Bays depends on the characteristics of the terrain. This is illustrated by the base in Machipongo on the Delmarva Peninsula and the base in Windsor, Virginia, which are separated by a distance of only 100 kilometers or 62 miles. The Carolina Bays in Windsor, Virginia are elongated ellipses with a width to length ratio of 0.55. The elliptical Carolina Bays in Machipongo, Virginia are more circular with a width to length ratio of 0.75. These differences in ellipticity are due to the different characteristics of the terrain. In 1983, an 8-inch thick layer containing fused glass beads and shock quartz grains was found in a drilling core near Atlantic City, New Jersey, about 170 miles or 274 kilometers to the north. Further investigation found that a meteorite impacted the eastern shore of North America in the Chesapeake Bay 35 million years ago. Much of the unconsolidated material in the surface was displaced by the impact, and the reduced depth of unconsolidated material in the Elmara may account for the more circular ellipticity of the Carolina base. Richmond, Virginia is 45 meters above sea level and approximately 140 kilometers from the Atlantic Ocean. The terrain in this area consists of coarse gravel that is not likely to liquefy like the sandy soil in the Carolinas. However, the impacts that created the Carolina Basin in Richmond were so large that the seismic vibrations fluidized the gravel and allowed the formation of bays in the adjacent terrain. We can fit in a list by the least squares method to the largest Carolina Bay in Richmond by selecting points in the visible part of the perimeter of the bay. The bay has a length of 7,058 meters, which means that the glacierized boulder that made this basin measured approximately 1.4 kilometers in diameter and had kinetic energy equivalent to 1,700 megatons of TNT. This is one of the largest Carolina bays in the east coast of the United States. The azimuth leads back to a convergence point just west of Lake Michigan. The terrain in Beaumont, North Carolina is 75 meters above sea level and 140 kilometers from the Atlantic Ocean. This area has Carolina bays that have been well preserved in spite of the urban development. 
This image shows a bay that has been fitted with an ellipse by the least squares method. It has a length of 2,561 meters, which is about 1.6 miles. The left side of the image shows a cluster of overlapping elliptical basins. Close inspection of the LiDAR image shows details of the overlaps. The large bay number 1 was overlaid by bay number 2. Bay number 2 was overlaid by bay number 3. And finally, the rim of bay number 4 touched bay number 3. Based on the elliptical shapes, it appears that bay number 1 partially overlaid another bay. This was an area of very heavy ice boulder bombardment. The rectangular feature in the middle of all these bays is a complex of eight barns from the Hoag Livestock Farms. Each of the barns measures about 116 meters or 380 feet. All of these barns could easily fit within one of the small Carolina bays. This LiDAR image centered in Rennert, North Carolina shows two large Carolina bays. The bay by Shannon, North Carolina has a large drainage channel across its west rim and the rim is not as sharply defined as the rims of the surrounding bays. This is probably because the ground was a wet or swampy area at the time that the bay was created. The ice boulder impact splashed mud and created the broad diffuse rim around the cavity. However, the smaller basins that overlay the diffuse rim have sharp, well-defined margins. The basin by Rennet, North Carolina has a sharp rim that makes it possible to fit an ellipse using the least squares method. This basin has a length of 4,247 meters. The National Mall in Washington, D.C., from the Lincoln Memorial to the Capitol could fit within this bay. This Carolina Bay is approximately four times larger than Meteor Crater in Arizona. In Wilmington, North Carolina, a bay called Blythe Bay has been completely covered by streets and houses. Blythe Bay has a length of 3,084 meters, and in spite of all the changes to the terrain made by human urbanization, LIDAR clearly reveals the elliptical geometry of the bay. There are several features that indicate the order in which this landscape formed. Blythe Bay was created first, and then a sand sheet covered the northwest portion of the bay. A few seconds later, a smaller impact made the one-kilometer bay that neatly clipped the sand sheet. This pattern of sand sheets overlaying bays, followed by bays overlaying sand sheets, is observed very frequently adjacent to rivers. The sand sheets may have originated from mud splashed by impacts in the rivers that was then driven by the strong winds that accompanied the formation of the bays. 15 kilometers southwest of South Sumter, South Carolina, there is another example adjacent to a river of sand sheets overlaying bays, followed by bays overlaying sand sheets. This is further evidence that strong winds accompanied the creation of the Carolina bays. The orientation of the sand sheets corresponds to the wind direction when the Carolina bays were created. The pattern of the sand sheets over the east coast of the United States matches the circulation of the polar jet stream. 10 kilometers southwest of Allendale, South Carolina, close to the Savannah River, there are many Carolina bays shaped like guitar picks. These basins are not elliptical, but their shape can be explained, taking into consideration the terrain on which they formed. This LiDAR image reveals the sequence in which these Carolina bays were formed. Basin number 1 formed first, and its south rim was overlaid by basin number 2, which measures about 3.5 kilometers. Then, basin number 3 overlaid a portion of basin 2. The bottom portion of basin number 3 is still elliptical, and it can be fitted with an ellipse by the least squares method. However, the ellipse appears elongated, as if it had been stretched. The distorted shape of the basins in this area can be explained by noticing that the terrain is inclined and the deformed part of the basins is on the uphill side. The north rim of the basin is 51 meters above sea level and the center of the basin is at 42 meters above sea level. The terrain beyond the south rim is at 40 meters above sea level. The flat portion of the basin measures 1,230 meters. A downhill impact creates an inclined conical cavity that has a steeper grade on the rear part of the penetration funnel. During viscous relaxation, liquefied soil flows into the rear of the basin while the whole hillside slides downward and stretches the basin. The central portion of the basin becomes level while the soil is still liquefied. The downhill impact modification can be modeled by tilting the impact target in the direction of the impact during viscous relaxation. The impact of a nice projectile on a viscous target of sand and clay produces a conical cavity that looks elliptical when viewed from above, but the higher part of the impact cavity is modified by the flow of viscous medium into the cavity as the whole surface slides downhill. The area of Bennettsville, South Carolina has a very high density of Carolina bays. 
The kinetic energy of the secondary impacts that made the basins in this area has been estimated to be approximately 8 megatons of TNT per square kilometer. Such powerful impacts would have devastated the environment. The impacts would not only have killed any animals in this area, they would have crushed and destroyed any remains. The map by Broughton and Weitzel shows the distribution of archaeological radiocarbon dates for megafauna fossils in the United States. The areas with the highest energy of bombardment in North Carolina and South Carolina do not have any megafauna fossils. It is almost as if the megafauna had never been there. This LiDAR image around Govan, South Carolina shows the rough terrain of the Piedmont on the left and the relatively flat terrain of the Atlantic Coastal Plain on the right. The colorized topography of the South Fork Edisto River shows a gradual change in elevation from the Piedmont toward the Atlantic Ocean. There are a few Carolina Bays on the rough terrain, but there are many on the flat terrain. Taking a closer look at the area around Govan, we see some pointed, wind-driven sand sheets. Some sand sheets cover Carolina Bays and some bays formed on top of sand sheets. This is an indication that there were violent winds in this area when the bays formed. In 2022, an elliptical basin as big as a football stadium was found using LiDAR images near the Oxley Nature Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma by Eric Brown. The basin has some man-made structures that have led to a surprising archaeological discovery. The basin is mathematically elliptical, like the well-preserved Carolina Bays, and its major axis is oriented towards Saginaw Bay in Michigan. The lines carved on the west side of the Tulsa Basin are aligned with the sunrise during the solstices and the equinoxes. The Tulsa Basin is probably the best ancient solar observatory in the United States, but we still don't know who carved those lines. The Nebraska basins are located about 520 meters above sea level on ancient sand and gravel deposits from the Platte River. The terrain is relatively rough and erosion has destroyed or deformed many of the basins. The Nebraska basins have the same elliptical geometry as the Carolina Bays and their orientations converge by the Great Lakes. Between 27,000 and 17,000 years ago, parts of Nebraska and Iowa were covered by Peoria Lewis, which is a yellowish deposit of windblown sediment. This has been interpreted to mean that the Nebraska basins must have existed before they were covered by the Peoria Lois. However, impacts on liquefied and consolidated terrain penetrate the soil and displace material laterally to form a cavity. Then the stratigraphy is restored by viscous relaxation under the force of gravity. This slide shows an impact experiment in which an ice projectile penetrated the red layer in the target and the stratigraphy was restored when the depth of the cavity was reduced by flow of material from the bottom up. The same mechanism could have applied to the Nebraska basins. The age of the Peoria Lois does not constrain the time of formation of the Nebraska basins by impacts. The choice between aerial or satellite images and LiDAR images is clear. LiDAR provides excellent visualization of the Carolina Bays and the colorized topography provides an extra level of detail that is indispensable for the study of the Carolina Bays. The Carolina Bays should not be neglected. Ask your geology professors to discuss the Carolina Bays because they are the most prevalent geological structures in the Atlantic Coastal Plain. There's a link to the LiDAR visualization tool in the description of the video. My book about the Carolina Bays is available at Amazon. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to be notified of future videos about the Carolina Bays and other scientific topics.